There is power behind every story we carry within. Every tragedy, no, yes, laugh, victory. And every testimony that is incubated within our souls have power. The power to transform from tragedy to crown, from obstacle to opportunity, and all the moments in between make us wiser. Watch Candid Conversations with Teresa for impactful, unheard moments that will certainly spark your power and inner truth to shift, heal, and restore your life. It's time to get real, uncover, unlock, unpack, set free, and increase the dialogue to change a life. We all start somewhere and end in places of destiny. Get ready for the long-awaited Candid Conversations with Teresa. Hi, it's Teresa Monroe Wilborn, and I want to welcome you back to Candid Conversations Season 4. Yes, we are rocking, we are rolling, and it is getting better and better and better. If you are here, you've either been following my channel on YouTube, you've been subscribing, and if you haven't, now you want to subscribe, now is the time. Make sure you share, make sure you like, and make sure you comment. I love reading your comments. They are so encouraging and so supportive. So keep following for the next four, the next eight weeks. We'll be here just having open and candid conversations about life. Stay tuned. Why well, you all always want me to talk about sports and then you all want me to talk about the one game I just learned about football. However, <laughs> I think it's a really, really good, um, analogy that I like to use when it comes to uh, leadership and relationships because um, one of the things about leadership like I hear my dad say all the time that leadership is lonely and I don't know that he is meaning the journey is lonely because I don't think the journey of being a leader and leading is lonely I think sometimes only you know really your vision that you want to see and only you're carrying that and you're having to get people to buy into that. And sometimes they don't always buy into it. They're not as passionate as you are. So that part of it is lonely. And sometimes, of course, you know the things that you need to do to get there. But as far as the journey, like I think the journey of leadership is so, so fun. Um, so uh, evolving. And as I think about myself, you know, in becoming a leader and becoming this in the seasons of leadership that I've been in uh, one of the things that I say is so important in leadership in success in being significant influential is um, relationships and the kind of relationships that you connect yourself to and the people that you have around you um, I know for myself I'm big on knowing that I have a vision yes I have a purpose but I can't do it by myself. Although it may be lonely, because I'm the one that have that vision, it doesn't have to, I don't have to do it alone. And so I don't, and so I myself have a team and each team member have their pos their position and their place and, they, and their lane. And it's taken me a while, but I'm at the point where I can delegate certain things. And I realize that I do that because, and it's good to have a team who, of people that actually trust your vision and they know what your vision is and they and they do buy into it so i've been i've been blessed to have people who buy into what it is that i'm trying to do in the world especially when i'm taking them with me so you know when you ask about uh football i think about football and one of the things about having a team as a leader is it does make it less lonely but it also allows you to stay in your lane and become a master in your lane and everybody else is in theirs and they're helping push you to where you're trying to get to um i think every i think every good leader should have certain relationships that he will not give up he will not exchange for the other like he will always have it if something were to happen and you know, there aren't people filling that position. He's going to always want to make sure it's filled. It's, it's no different than a football team. Like every football team has certain positions, has certain relationships that are required. And a team is not complete. A football field 
is not complete. A game cannot start until every position, relational position is filled. And when you think about relation, relation is an act, like that's an action word. So these are people that are actually doing things. They're not just statues and just pawns just standing there. And so I think about, you know, as a leader, I get to have people around me who are also moving in their lane. They're not trying to be like me. I'm not trying to be like them, but they need me and I need them. So I get to help them and they get to help me at some level, push my vision forward. The last thing I want to have is anyone who is pulling my vision back and pulling or I'm pulling them back versus they get to push me forward. So I watch even the evolve, the evolving of candid conversations with Charissa and I'm not, this is now season four. I would have never imagined that in season one, I would have a show that's been going four seasons in. Like, I don't know what in the heck I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing, but this is what I, this is what I want to do. I spoke to a few people and they said, okay, let's get to this. This is what we can do. Let's make this happen. You need to, you need to get this stuff out there. People need to hear it. I'm like, okay. And then it just, every, every season has just gotten better and better and better. My team has remained the same, but my team has also grown. It hasn't been lonely. I haven't been as a leader of candid conversations, doing it alone by myself and struggling. It hasn't been that. Like I've literally have people who have bought into this vision of changing lives and watching us grow, watching myself grow and even watching my team grow. My team, I, I, I I'm so protective of my space and my environment. I have to be as a leader because I have to protect the vision that God gave me. And so I'm also protective of, of, of my team. Like I'm very protective of my team and they would, they know it. Um, but they're also loyal to me and I'm loyal to them. And that relationship that I garner and that I, um, cherish and that I have, and that I allow to grow with them, like I'm growing, but so are they. I, I don't leave them where I met them. No, I grab them by the hand. They hook their caboose onto mine and they said, okay, we're with you. And so when I move, they move. When I say relationship is an action word, it's an action word. When I move, they, they, they move. When I hurt, they hurt. When I go through, they go through. So it hasn't been a lonely process. It doesn't have to be a lonely process. There are times when I had no idea what I was doing and they were like, okay, we got you. And they started moving things out of the way and they started making things happen. They started making a hole for me to go through. And I talk about that hole because in football, I'm just now learning this game, right? So I sit next to my husband and we would watch this game and he's a huge Bears fan. So I know that when the Bears are watching, don't ask no questions because he ain't paying me no money. Now, when anybody else is playing, anybody else is playing, he is present. I can have a conversation. So I would ask questions like, why does this, and what does this mean? And why in the world would someone throw a ball to the, to the quarterback or to the running back? And he is, he's going to find, like there ain't even a hole. He's going to run to what I'm going to call a crowd. Like there's a bunch of people here. He caught the ball. And there is all this space on the left and right of these group, these lot of people, but he's going to run into the middle of everybody. I don't know. Why would you do that? Because once he does that, he could only make a few yards and he gets tackled. I don't know, it didn't make sense to me. And so, so my husband said to me that, first of all, he said the outside, someone said, that's a setup. Like it's actually worse to try and get to the outskirts would look to be like more open. It's not, but there are also team members that he is relying on, on his team to, even though it may not look like a hole, by the time he gets there, they would have created a hole by defending and offending and moving away and pushing away. And then next thing you know, there's a hole this small that's quick enough for him to get through. Cause I'm sure if he would have turned around, there wouldn't be a hole anymore, but he relies on his team to create this hole big enough, fast enough, strong enough for him to get through. And then once he does that, then, then he gets to, he gets to continue running towards the goal, but without his team, he can throw the ball and catch the ball and make a hole and make it to the goal. He can't do it all. 
So you have all of these different players who are a part of your team as a leader. And mind you, one thing we know, like one thing I hear in football, especially on is a show called, I think it's called The Morning After, or Monday Morning Football. I think it's what it's called. Monday, yes, Monday Morning Football. And they talk about all the games that were played before. And you always hear them talking about the quarterback. I so tired here with the quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Because in my mind, I'm thinking there's 14, 15, 16 other people playing, but you hear about the quarterback position. You may hear heard about the running back, but you hear about the quarterback being so important. And so I think about the quarterback as a leader. But even as, as, as the greatest leader and most important part of a football team, everybody else, like every other position, every other relation, no position of the team is just as important as he is to them. Like he relies on the offensive line. Like he relies on the running back. He relies on the linebacker. He rely like I'm don't mind me talking, right? I've been watching this game in this short space of time, but it, I think it's just such an interesting game of leadership and team and relationship and connection and network and communicating and the work that goes into us becoming great and significant. Like no football team can win with just one player. No foot to the point where imagine having a there's no such thing as having a great team or no sense there's no such thing as having a great quarterback and a lousy team like you almost have to have both you probably can get away with a great team and a lousy quarterback before you can get away with a great quarterback and a lousy team and so in one of my episodes I talk about humility like this is why as leaders as, as leaders we have to be humble enough to know that man my position is secure my vision is secure my purpose is secure no one else can play my position a quarterback as good as he is he cannot play the position of, of a running back he cannot play the position of a linebacker he cannot be like he can't play those positions but his position is secured so he gets to be confident and courageous in his position I get to be confident and courageous in my vision and what I'm doing and allow everybody else to do this and help me and we get to help each other along the way and guess what we all get to win a championship at the end of the day we all get to win no one gets to say I did that absolutely no but no we did that we did that together and and so I, you know, it's it's interesting. It was just interesting that I that, that people say, you know, leadership is lonely, but I think the the visionary part of it is lonely, but the journey, the journey is not, the journey is not. Another very good question, right? How how long should you and do you keep your team? for a long period of time. And uh, I think that even before I th think about that, because I think about the, these games and sports and you know, they change players all the time for, for various reasons or players decide to go to a different team. But even before that, as I think about us as leaders and wherever we are in our lives right now, I think about where you are right now. Are you, and whether you're in an employer, whether you're an employee, whether you're doing both, Maybe you've been in a job 20 years. Maybe you've been in a job five years. You've been in a job 18 years. You've been in a job one. And one thing I love about seasons, right? Like when you think about sports, for instance, like all of the different sports have their seasons to play. And football, for instance, football starts in October and Super Bowl is either end of January, beginning of February, and then there's nothing. No, well, there's no more football and then there's something else that comes and comes along and then basketball overlaps in, in, into that and, then, and like all of these have seasons and it's because even the players need rest and then you have something else that comes up. Um, but in in life as leaders, there are times when um, like I remember having worked as a social worker professionally for 15 years. At the end of that, something else as far as vision and purpose as far for me was coming up. So I knew that eventually my season as a social worker working for the hospital would eventually end and something else would, would come up. Now, when that was gonna end and how that was going to end, I don't know, but I knew it had to in order for a greater vision to 
to be birthed. And there are many people who know this, but they don't know how to end a season. They don't know how to recognize that, okay, this season is finished. They know the season is finished, but then they don't know. They don't, they're so scared of the unknown for the next season, they just decide to stay there. So, so, so sometimes we would, what I would call, <laughs> overstay our welcome. Sometimes we stay in positions and jobs and places where the season ended years ago and years ago, and we're miserable, we're upset, we're angry, we're hurting, we're not satisfied, we're not content. And a lot of leaders lead, do that, and then they blame it on commitment, or they blame it on loyalty, or they blame it on I can't quit, or they blame it on, but if I do that, what's gonna happen to them? No, there are times when you have to know, like everything has a season. Everything has a season, therefore, everything has a purpose in that season. And once it ends, it's time to move on. So there's so many, we go back to football, there's so many sports players I can think about right now that have left their former team for another team, having played for however long, however many years. Why? For whatever, the why don't, and, and, and why they leave shouldn't even matter. The fact that they even realized that it was a season. And it could be they themselves had personal reasons. They need to go from one state or one city to another. It, the other reason could be there wasn't a, 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 a jiving or a, what's the word I want to use? Like this connection between them and the team. So maybe they need to go and find another team. Um, Maybe them and the coach wasn't working out. So they needed to go and find a different coach where the connection and the network and the relationship is a lot better. There, you know, I, God forbid that, a, you know, my team, that happens, but there, there may be a come a time when the people I'm driving with now and have been for the last five years, one may say, okay, I, my purpose is taking me somewhere else. And them as a leader, it's going to take me as another leader knowing exactly where they are to say, you know what? Thank you so much for your service. Thank you so much for supporting me all these years. Now I get to support you. Go ahead, you have my complete blessing. Let me know how I can help. And they get to go now to, to their next season. But how many leaders, we are so thinking that, you know, we're so selfish, we're so self-centered that we don't understand that people grow. And when you grow, seasons change. When you grow, seasons change. When I grow, as I am growing, my seasons are changing. And it is affecting so many people who are not a part of my team, but it's also positively affecting other people that are a part of my team. And there are gonna come times when as I grow, there may be some team members of mine that aren't growing with me. And I'm gonna have to be a leader who is self-aware enough, number one, and then who is all about the people number two to be able to say, I'm moving, I'm growing, I loved the support you've given me so far, it has been amazing. Maybe the season for you has ended. And you get, and, and I get to say that. And it'll be up to them to recognize, okay, maybe you're right. But why, why continue? And we should not have to continue to stay in positions and in on teams and on a journey that's not completely benefiting everybody. Not just the visionary, not just the other team members, but everybody collectively as a whole. When seasons change, we are growing.